I'm uh, Jonathan Collins. I'm a professor of education, political science by courtesy, and international and public affairs here at Brown. I've been at Brown for about five years. Started here as a postdoc, as a presidential postdoctoral fellow, and then transitioned into the tenure track role. I'm a political scientist by training. My uh, PhD is in political science from the University of California, Los Angeles. And so what I study uh, is you know, urban politics, local and state politics, education politics, but then with this focus on education policy and really thinking about big questions around democratic governance. And I think the big question guiding my research is how do we make democratic governance more accessible and more effective for folks in low-income communities and for people of color. A lot of research around different democratic innovation tools and, and responsiveness to um, different kinds of strategies to improve participation in things like school board meetings, as well as like figuring out people's preferences for hot button um, education politics issues like mask mandates around COVID, you know, these new discussions around critical race theory. In essence, I guess my research is very much uh, concerned with inequality ways to think generatively about um, closing gaps and inequality. Well, I think a, a project that I'm really proud of um, that I stepped in as the evaluator for is this project called Voices Con Poder. It's a, a participatory budgeting initiative that took place in Central Falls, right out of Providence, uh, which is the uh, largest Latinx populated district in the country, it's one of uh, the lowest performing districts in terms of standardized testing. And so it's a district that's faced a lot of challenges uh, over the past few uh, years. But what they've been trying to do is come up with innovative ways to improve the district across the gamut. And one of the things that they wanted to do was turn to democratic innovation as a, as a way to do that as well. So they partitioned some of their um, COVID relief federal funding um, towards a participatory budgeting initiative. So essentially, they allowed the community to decide how $100,000 of their ESSER funding was going to be utilized. I came in with my research assistants and we evaluated both the public's preferences for how they'd like to see the funding used. And then we studied this group of delegates that they selected to go through this eight week process of putting together proposals that were ultimately voted upon by the larger community. And so we followed this process, we studied the effectiveness of it. We got to see <laughs> through the course of eight weeks how people's views of politics and policy changed as a result of being right in the center of like where the decision making was happening. And to see this kind of growth and empowerment, this feeling of uh, excitement and enthusiasm towards their ability to see a real change happening in their district, you know, that was a fun project for me. I mean, I think about the voting day. It, it was in August, it was on the hottest day <laughs> on record in Rhode Island history. And so all these folks are coming into this swarming hot gym at the middle school and they're using official ballots that we got donated by the Secretary of State's office to cast their ballots uh, for this participatory budgeting initiative. And we have kids voting, parents voting, adults, there's music playing, there's food trucks outside. And so you really got to see like the beauty of democracy and communities that we don't associate with um, uh, strong democratic participation. So it was, it was fun for me. My teaching is what makes me uh, a good researcher. I mean, to, you know, to the extent that I consider myself a good researcher, it, it's very much informed by my teaching. I learn so much from my students. Um, I put out a lot of the concepts that I push theoretically in my work. I shop them in my courses. I want to know how students respond to ideas about deliberation and participatory democracy and democratic innovation, how they respond to ideas of racial justice, racial inequality, intersectionality. What are the students um, thinking about these relatively uh, dense and arduous concepts? What are uh, their ideas in terms of like how to make these ideas more practical, more useful, more impactful? And so in the challenge that comes along with both explaining concepts to students, getting students to see the benefits of operationalizing concepts, you know, that challenge is useful for me, but then also that's that kind of synthetic energy that you get in the classroom from uh, students bouncing their perspectives around. I feel like I come out 
of each class smarter, sharper, and better prepared um, to take my research to another level. And I think the questions that you've put on the table uh, are very uh, powerful yet innocuous um, questions and they're great for having these kinds of conversations. I think if there's another question about inequality, I, the, the big question I think that we always grapple with is like, what can we really do about it? You know, like what can we really do to address issues of, of inequality? And I guess like, you know, what is the academy as a whole doing to um, provide something useful for that question? And I think, you know, for me, it's something that I grapple with quite a bit. Um, you wonder, are you doing enough? Are you are sitting in your nice office in the ivory tower at, in the Ivy League? Are you really on the right side of getting this thing right? I don't have the answer to the question, but I think it's important that we continue to ask ourselves these questions, that we confront our own privilege, that we confront our, the uh, sort of um, this fortunate position that many of us find ourselves in and use that as motivation to make sure that we're holding ourselves accountable, that like inequality should be at the forefront of the work that we're doing, the, que the questions that we ask, the research designs that we um, develop, the way in which we think about interacting with quote unquote human subjects. You know, we should be thinking about ways in which this helps us move us a step closer to an equitable society.